What's good, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Community Voices. I have to say happy holidays to everybody as well. You know, it's that season. Hope we're all staying safe and enjoying family time and whatever else we're doing. Um, today, I'm joined by literally one of the most impactful centers in the game today. Neither him nor I believe that he's really hit his ceiling yet in the NBA. Welcome, Indiana Pacers star center and basically professional Lego builder, if I understand correctly, Miles Turner. How you doing, man? Welcome to Community Voices. Hey. I'm good, man. I appreciate you having me on today. I'm in a great place. No, I appreciate you coming. I know you got a busy schedule, you know what I'm saying, with practices and games and everything going on. I just appreciate your time for sure, man. Thank you. All right. So I want to kick this convo off by going back to a home state that we actually share a uh, home of. I'm from Texas as well, from Corpus Christi to be exact. Um, right. And your hometown is in Bedford, Texas. Now, Bedford, Texas is more, I, I'm where I'm from is way south Texas. Bedford, Texas is a little bit more north. Um, I think right outside of Arlington and like Fort Worth, I believe. Yep. What was it like growing up there and how did that kind of culture of the South shape you? A fellow Texan, though. Corpus Christi, home of Whataburger, by the way, in case y'all ain't yes, know. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nah, man, the uh, growing up in Texas really shaped who I am today. You know, we pride ourselves in Southern hospitality, right? And that's one of the things that I kind of take from me everywhere is just, you know, treating people with kindness and whatnot. And definitely something that I took with me to the Midwest. Um, you know, when I came uh, to Indiana, it was just a, a little bit of change of scenery for me. Things are a little bit slower paced. And where I'm from, everything's very fast paced. You know, everybody's working, hustling. And, um, you know, that's another part of the things that I took with me. You know, part of my personality is just like, you know, my work ethic, my demeanor and how I approach things. For sure. For sure. Now we're talking about Texas. One of the I mean, growing up, one of the people I remember, I went to Texas State University, so a little bit outside of Austin. But I remember KD was at UT tearing things up. Um, and, you know, I know he was one of your biggest inspirations as well growing up because, you know, he's a UT Longhorn alumni, um, just like yourself. So what made you choose to play at UT in college? And kind of like what other players did you look up to when you're building up your own game, kind of figuring out, you know, how you want to kind of have your own style? Yeah, no, there's a few factors that went into going to UT. Um, you know, I, I actually grew up a Longhorns fan, just, uh, you know, Paul Farm was the home state uh, or the, home, uh, the hometown team. And uh, just proximity, you know, my parents, you know, they were a huge part of my journey, my family, you know, my little sister being able to come and watch my games. You know, if I were to go to school like the East Coast or West Coast, I had to catch a flight every game. And, um, and I knew it would be something that was inconvenient for them. So um, I definitely had them in mind. And, you know, believe it or not, I actually wanted to go to Texas for education. Basketball was cool, but, you know, I was getting in psychology um, um, a lot more um, – my last year of high school, and I wanted to kind of transition to that uh, at the University of Texas. So I went there, obviously one of the best, you know, state schools that there is as far as education is concerned. You know, we'll start here, change the world. You know what I'm saying? That's our, that's our model there. Um, but yeah, um, Katie was a, was a little bit of influence as well. Um, I went to the, uh, the University of Texas basketball camp when I was real young, like fifth, sixth grade. And it was like his freshman or he might have just declared for the draft. Mm -hmm. um, he was there and he came down and like put on a show for us, you know, played, uh, played pickup with some of us. And, um, you know, just being around like greatness at such a young age and seeing the way he worked and seeing how he was like, I mean, dang, I could do that here too. You know, it had a little, um, it had a big impact on me. And, you know, being a Dallas a native, um, I was really taking in the game a lot when uh, they made those championship runs, you know, those two years. And one of the guys I wanted to emulate my game out uh, after at the time was Dirk Nowitzki. Man, he used a seven footer. Mm -hmm. um, the way he shoot the ball, you know, the way he was able to, you know, kind of um, really, you know, put the team on his back in those situations is something I really admired. And you know, right after the games, I go out there and start doing the Dirk fadeaways, and me and my dad would go out there and shoot just right after watching. It was a huge real inspiration for me as well. Yeah, I love that. Dirk, Dirk changes. I feel like he, I wouldn't say he doesn't get talked about enough, like as much how, how much he changed the game, but he definitely changed like the way the game is. So many of the greats, even like you can just see pieces of his game and his sprinkles throughout the NBA. Like, yeah, that's awesome. That's super fire. I love Dirk. Um, now, you know, I want to fast forward a little bit because I could definitely ask you a bunch of questions about the time from then now, but I want to fast forward a little bit. Um, you know, to today, you know, you're a star center for the Pacers, you had a huge impact on the team on both sides of the court, defense and offense. Now, a few months ago, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, a few months ago, I heard you say uh, during like a, a media day interview, I believe, that you feel like you haven't reached your ceiling, but then at the same time, you also mentioned that, you know, you kind of feel like you're the bet on this team at only 26 years of age, which to me is also really young, but you know, we're also kind of playing in a young man's game where, you know, all the sports are kind of changing. Where do you kind of strive to improve your game so you can continue to kind of have that impact on the court and with your team? 
Oh, well, there's a few areas and, you know, you hit the nail on the head. I don't feel like I'm anywhere close to my ceiling. You know, I feel like I provide so much defensively in my offensive game. You know, it's just as good. And I'm still trying to put that on display and, um, you know, have people see what I'm really about, especially at the five position, you know, my natural position. So, um, you know, for me, I've taken on a new leadership role this year. That's one of the things I really wanted to add. And I've always been a leader. You know, I've been a team captain in the past, but it's different when you have like a younger group of guys coming in. And, um, you know, obviously I'm a young guy as well, but like the, the younger group, like born in the 2000s group come in, you know, there's a lot that comes with um, this league, you know, being introduced to it. So just trying to be that big brother figure as well has been like a big thing for me. Um, and also just, um, just to be, just being more aggressive offensively, you know, just um, taking more advantage of my opportunities, you know, I'm shooting the ball, you know, a lot better than I have in the past this year. And that's a testament to, to you know, the, the work I put on it. Um, and just obviously just trying to grow my game as much as possible, you know, in the time that I have to maximize my career. For sure. Most definitely. I love it. And I can, I can just see it too. Like you, like you just, it's just, when you speak it, you can tell that you say it in a way that, that just shows like you're, you're always trying to figure out where to go to where to get better, to take to the next level. Like you always have like a bar that you set for yourself. So even when I heard you say in that, in the interview, I was like, yeah, he like, he's not just saying that he means it. Cause he like literally is seeing the next steps where he wants to take his game. So I, I feel that a hundred percent. Now, talking about all the impact that you have on the court, but you also have an impact on the community as well. Um, your community voices will be donating 5K to the WARM organization. WARM stands for Work as Role Models to continue the foundation initiative to give back to the community and really provide resources for um, our unhoused community during these tough winters, um, which is extremely important. Now, I would love to know kind of how did you start WARM and what attracted you to tackle on that important issue in particular? Yeah, so workers role models, you know, that was the very first thing I did when I got here to the Indianapolis community. Um, you know, I got drafted here and I wanted to find a way to connect the community, uh, the community, you know, as quick as possible. And where it all got started was I was real young, man, back in Texas. It's one of those uh, one of those winters where it just happened to be, you know, in the teens. Doesn't happen often, but, you know, no, it got exactly. old. As and, um, uh, I, man, I was young. I had to be in, like, fourth maybe fifth grade and my mom is one of those like apocalyptic mothers who always prepares for the worst like at any times whatsoever right and I happened to have a whole bunch of my uh, my jackets in the car at the time and we were just you know on our way uh probably just going grocery shopping or something like that and um we saw a kid just walking by himself with no coat no nothing shirts like shorts and like oh no this kid's got to be crazy right so we you know around that window it's like hey yo like you need a jacket he's like yes he was like like practically begging for it and that really like hit home with me as such you've seen that at such a young age you know and I kind of made a promise to myself and really to my mom that like if I ever were to be put in a position you know a fortune position I am today you know to get back so I don't have to witness something like that again in a sense or anybody would have had to be a part of something like that so warm all started off with just that one idea right there and it's been huge here in the community you know I um I honestly consider it more of a, uh, a community activation, you know, more than like initiative or like a charity at that. And, you know, shout out to Finish Line Community Voices as well. I mean, I appreciate y'all for the 5K donation. You know, that's huge for us. And um, the idea behind it is to get people in the community to go out there and put together these packs or have like stuff in the back of the car to give to people. And man, it's, it's just been a huge thing. And I'm growing it each more and more every year. What, what are some of the things, if you don't mind me asking, like that are, that are in, the, in the packs too, what they'll be handing out, um, handing out to people? Can you kind of uh, go into that too? What, what, what are some of those essentials for people? Yeah, you said it, essentials and like food, water, socks, hand warmers, like toothbrush, toothpaste, sometimes some loose change, like anything you can think of that somebody would need or if you were in a position of need, like what would be the most like helpful for you? That's the whole thing about that is getting us to go into, you know, the minds of people who may not be as fortunate as us, right? So, um, and honestly, yo, it's just, it's all about kindness. Like I said, from the, uh, from the get-go, you know? Um, you know, I actually, I actually have kids back home. I work a couple of elementary schools and I have them write, you know, a little inspirational notes or have some drawings to put in these bags as well. And something like that just might put a smile on your face one day and who knows how much you really need that smile for the day you know or just that that little pocket of a uh, of good news right so you know when anytime uh, we put together these packs we try to just keep the other fierce person in mind i i absolutely love that because i always i always tell people that like even like rather you know we everybody looks for somebody to inspiration or like you know you never know what somebody's going through we always talk about like you know, the things going on, people or like mental health issues and things like that. But oftentimes, like we, we always wonder, like, what could we do or stuff like that? But really, 
sometimes it is as simple as like showing some kind of love, showing some kind of kindness, like whether we know them or not, but just giving, giving like giving back just to do it, not, not expecting nothing in return, like just trying to be, you know, helpful, like trying to be progressive on this earth and like spread more positivity because you like you don't know, holding the door open for somebody could change their day, you know what I'm saying, or like letting some little little things go a big way and like these are the kind of things to me that are so important because you save people's lives like you remember giving that kid that jacket at four like like in fourth grade like you remember that all the way to now you know you being your age and doing these things for the people like you know I can only imagine how many people see that and like remember those things and what it makes them do or who they become or when they'll need that later so that's I, I applaud you, hat off to you. I would hat off to you, my hair kind of wild, but you, you, see, the, you see the Justin. But I got you. Now, um, bef before I get into a couple more questions, I would love to kind of know, I know you said um, more like community activation, but are there other, any, any other um, community activations that you kind of have in mind with a uh, warm going forward, you know, heading into the top of the new year and things like that? Yeah, so um, one of the things I have going on here in Indianapolis, I also have a, um, a fan section here, you know, that I sponsor. It's called Turner's Block, you know, um, big home court advantage for us, making a lot of noise throughout the entire game. They're up loud on their feet. You know, we don't went viral a couple of times. I mean, um, you know, something that I have a lot of, um, you know, I put a lot of my, um, my thought and a lot of my all into it at that. In February, the block is coming together to put together some of these packs you know, I just referred to. And, you know, we're all going to go out and hand them out. But it's the process of putting them together that's going to be huge. It's such a big bonding moment for me and my, and my block. So I'm there with them. You know, I'm putting together packs as well. You know, I'm there to, uh, you know, to, to, to just to be with them and just have that camaraderie. You know, COVID was one of those things that really messed up, you know, me getting out into community. And these past like, year and a half has been huge for me just to try to reintegrate myself with the people. And uh, something like that I take a lot of pride in. I love it. I love it. I, I can't wait to just see the fruits of that too. I, I love that. That's super awesome. Continue that mission for sure. Um, now, you know, I said, I know you've been busy. I know you're you got to practice things like that. So I want to make sure I respect your time, but I do ask you a couple more questions, not necessarily related to basketball because see, you mentioned at the top of the interview earlier, you are very talented in many areas. And one of those talents uh, kind of circles back to your passion for Legos and building. And you've mm -hmm. done some crazy things with Legos. I've been watching you like create these big pieces. It kind of makes me want to like buy a pack of Legos and see, you know what I'm saying, get my hands kind of going. But it's really cool to see what you do because you really do a lot of cool stuff in fashion and in, in Legos and in fashion as well, um, in my opinion. So now I would love to know this. What kind of enjoyment does that bring you to like, you know, be building these things and creating these things? And do you kind of find it as like a gentle way to continue to keep that inner child in you alive? Absolutely, man. And you just said a big thing right there, your inner child, right? I feel like it's such a, a thing that as you grow up to, to shade that, right? Like I'm a man, you know, I'm grown, this and that. I don't enjoy stuff. Like I hate that negative connotation when it comes to to certain little things that got you this place in the first place. You know, like I'm working on, it's a home alone mansion right now, you know, holiday season. Oh, that's fire. Yeah. So, you know, I always got my gears turned. I always got something going. And honestly, it's just a way for me to come home and just do something constructive, you know, and just keep my mind fresh. You, there's such a negative, I mean, uh, such a, a misconception about athletes, right? That we're just in the gym all day. Like, <laughs> no, no, we practice for three, not even that, two hours a day at that. Then you have the rest of your day to figure something out to do. And I feel that's where a lot of people can get themselves into trouble with all that spare time. You know, for me, there's something that's comforting, something that I genuinely enjoy doing. And something, like I said, it's kind of just keeps my mind active, you know, just little things like work on my Rubik's Cube, like any little thing that I can get, I can do to get myself going is big. I used to spend a lot of time playing video games while it's great for hand-eye coordination and stuff like that. It's not always the best way to, just, you know, to structurally use your time. There's ways to definitely, you know, benefit it from it if you're good, you know, a lot of streaming, all that type of stuff. But you don't have to be good at following instructions, like to play, I mean, to build Legos, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's one of those things that I've just always loved doing. I have a lot of pride in, and I also do it and put it out there to like show other people that, yo, it's cool, man. You can step outside of your comfort zone and try something every now and then, or see kids seeing people like we're out of the, when they see uh kids see us on TV, it's like, we're out of this world to them. Like we're not even like, like them at all. Yeah. So, have some fifth graders see me put together some Legos like oh maybe he's more like me than I think you know so it, it goes beyond me just building the Legos no it's just it's just a way of me you know finding a way to really 
I don't associate my fans, find a way for me just to keep myself going and keep me out of trouble. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I, that's exactly how I saw it. I was like, you know, there's so many, we learned to love Legos at such an early age, but like, that's a thing that you just like, you go with building little castles and stuff and to build little people to building cars or to building spaceships or to bring, building, you know, houses. Like, it's really cool because that, that kind of thing really is meant to like, to the inner child piece is so important, especially as we get older, we think we got to work all day and grind because we got bills and people to take care of. And we kind of forget to like cater that inner child that kind of has that like love component. So I, I, I love, I love that. I love that you spoke to that. Now I talked, I talked about Lego, but I also mentioned earlier fashion. You have a shoe collection that is pretty crazy. It's absolutely insane. I think you have like three places where you keep that collection like broken down into multiple places. So. Mm. I would love to know outside of basketball, what was the first sneaker that you fell in love with? And like, what is it? What is your take on sneakers today, really? Yeah, man. So that sneaker collection just came out of pure pettiness, right? And let me explain. It's all, it all tied back together. Uh, one of the shoes that I really rocked a lot was just the, the low top Converse Chuck Taylor, just all stars, like just classic. regular, regular classics, right? But the caveat to that is that I've worn a size 18 shoe since I was, I don't know, 14, 15 years old. Yeah, at least. You're not going to the store and buying some size 18 shoes. You're not just, you know, <laughs> going up to the, you know, your friendly neighborhood of seven foot NBA player, like, hey man, can I borrow some shoes? Like, I didn't have actual shoes like that when I was a kid. So those are the only pair of shoes I had. And they were black. I wore them so they were green. Like, <laughs> that's, that's all I had. And man, I remember one day, uh, my dad was like, I'm gonna get some shoes, man. I was like, no, no, no. I refuse to be that kid who wore basketball shoes with my fits, like growing up. Mm. It was just an odd look to me. I never wanted to be that. So I made them work with every, every single, you know, fit I had. My dad threw them away one day and my response to going away, uh, growing up was taking out the trash. So mm. saw them in there. Hell, what are my shoes doing in here? He tried to sneak them in there. Took them out to be petty, wore them to school and... Thank the Lord, I started getting good at basketball and I started going to all the Nike camps and stuff like that. So I got my first couple pairs of Jordans, my first couple pairs of like Nikes and whatnot. So I used to go to school and people make fun of me like, damn, you are the same uh, pair of shoes to school every single day. So to be as petty as possible, I said, if I, when I make it, <laughs> I'm going to buy every shoe imaginable in my size and I want you all to see it. And yes, I do keep, I have a big collection at my house in Austin. I have um, part of my collection here in Indianapolis as well. And the other parts, you know, is back home in Dallas. So that's where the shoe collection comes from. It's not because I'm a big sneaker head. It's just because I'm just a, a petty, petty person. That has to be one of the best stories I've heard all year. It's just absolutely hilarious. Because you're right, like, a size 18, like, really, like, what kind of, how, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not the typical size, you know what I mean? And you get a pair and your dad sneaking them is hilarious. He was he was done with those shoes. He said, not in my house. He said, get them out of here. Exactly. <laughs> That's super funny. Well, man, look, I want to ask you one more question before we wrap things up. Um, as we head into a new year, I would love to kind of know, I know we talk about like goals and things like that, but I think it's really important to kind of reset your intentions. Like, you know, we some of us have missed things. Some of us have done things in this year. And so it's always kind of good to go into the next year, kind of resetting your intentions on what you want to do and what you want to accomplish and then attacking for that year. So I would love to know for uh, 2023, you know, what is that for you as far as the goals that you're trying to tackle on court and off court? Well, off the court, just becoming a bigger, uh, more impactful voice in the community. That's one thing that, like I told you, I took a lot of pride in and one thing that I was able to do here in the community, but I want to take that more national in the sense of, you know, I, I give back to my community at all costs. And I also am someone who, you know, hasn't always been as fortunate as I am now, you know? So I, I know kind of what it's like not to have everything that you need whenever you need it. And like I said, that's what more I'm stood on. So um, just keep getting back to the community, keep being me, keep having an impact in the communities that I'm in. And, you know, on the court, man, it's just take my game to new heights. And I'm in such a preferred position to do so. You know, I have, um, I have all-star dreams. You know, I want to be all NBA. I want to be that person who, you know, you look back on and say, oh, yeah, I remember Miles Turner. I don't want to be snap famous. Like, oh, who was that? Oh, who was that kid's mm, name? I've never um, heard that before. That's, that's, that's so a good way to put it. Snap famous. Like, dang, what was his name? Like, nah. You know, I'm not trying to be snap famous out here. Someone was trying to, you know, build on my legacy and, um, you know, continue to grow that, you know, while I had the opportunity to maximize my career. So, you know, I'm very, a very intention based and I'm excited for you know, what's to come because it's big things. 
I love it, man. I love it, man. I, I'm listen. I'm rooting for you, man. I'm excited. I mean, you are doing God's work out here. You're at the same time. You know, what I'm saying you're dominating on the court. You're doing the things that you love at the end of the day on and off the court. I, I really don't know what more I could ask for out of a player that I see on TV just to be this kind of person who, you know, is really doing the work. So I just appreciate you. I thank you for cutting out time and you let us know how we can help you with any kind of endeavors off the court in the future. Just link up. We got you. We got you taken care of and we appreciate you, man. Absolutely. Love y'all. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Community Voices. Happy holidays and things like that. Take care.